Good morning, gamers. Welcome back to Banished Souls. This is your captain, Cryptic Gaming. So, there seems to be a little bit of static going around about who can build the best tank. And uh, I, I really like the tank builds that I've come up with. So, I wanted to show you my tank ship and just give you a little walk around. So, we do have the Caliban's, uh, we'll have to see what it's called. It's Caliban's Curse or something like that we're using on our mast. But let's talk about weapons first. So, on the front, we do have the twin winch ballista. It does massive damage. I mean, it's, a, it's an impressive piece of uh, weaponry. If you're not in a sand buck, I wouldn't put it on a sand buck because you don't get those uh, fire boosts. But hey, man, uh, something like this, I want to add just a little bit more range into my cannon fields and stuff. So we're going to add this into our ship. If you're curious what kind of damage this does, let's bring up the details for you here. So the base damage 5,162, reload one second. Takes a little longer than that. It's about five seconds between shots. Uh, range 1,350 meters. Gun ports, there's only one. So the fire rate is uh, every second is what it says. Now, if you want to get the double draw, that is where you're going to get that 600% increase in damage at a range of 1,350 meters. You're going to have to hold that, that trigger down before you release. You'll see the arrows come in when it finally comes in and it's settled in. You're at the maximum damage you're going to put out. It's going to add a 20% of damage. It's piercing as well and increases damage to weak points by 75. And this thing is way more accurate than using a long gun, I believe, personally. So, uh, see what else we've got here. So, I went ahead and I went with the Coronauts. You open this up in the past. Uh, it is a great cannon. Uh, it has a very fast reload at five and a half seconds. And then you have a range of 600 meters. Gun port seven. So that's going to be pretty nice. If you've got seven cannons, we're going to be able to fire there. So really nice. It's going to add a 50% damage of severe damage when target is flooded. It adds 10% of damage to flooding damage as well. So you can get that riptide effect going on. That's going to be kind of nice. Uh, flooding is going to add 102 damage to the damage per shot of 125 or 1025. Weak point damage 165%, projectile speed 200 meters per second. So and it'll fit on all ship sizes according to this. But if you go and uh, look at like the uh, the twin winch ballista, when you come down, it's only going to fit on medium or larger ships. So. You need to make sure that you're building the correct ship. So again, Coronauts on this side. Then on the rear, I decided to go with a Darnellis gun. Uh, mainly because it's just got such a powerful shot on there. I've not really used it much. Uh, I wanted to kind of try something new as far as... It's got great explosive damage. 3 adds 30% damage of explosion damage in a 30 meter blast radius. So that's going to be pretty nice, man. But these are, these are just some lethal, lethal rounds. Uh, I don't run them on my sandbuck because they don't give that blaze effect. And then, of course, we're running Leopold 3 for our mortars. Uh, I mean, it's hard to beat them. You could use something like the LeFleur. Uh, that's one of those deals where, I mean, it does really good damage. But this one's got the more damage here. I mean, you're looking at 14, 145 get to 15 to 21 now of course this does add that putrefying effect it's a 15 percent damage explosive damage in a 50 meter blast so you're still going to get some of that damage out there but it's also going to drain their stamina down and uh just really mess up their ability to brace not that i've seen where the ai has much ability to brace so you know that's something we might put on i don't run it typically uh right now because of the plague fleets they have a natural immunity to that so that's something you need to think about now, when it comes to armor, I know it is one of those things where it is uh, dealer's choice. So, I like to run Ouroboros. That's that's just one of my things. It does the heal. It does a really great brace effect. It has uh, really good buffs as far as explosives, 20%, uh, flooding, 30%, fire, 30%. Then you're getting that. Uh, uh, I always get tongue-tied on this Amalgamat whatever anyway restores 50 percent of health while bracing the effect only occurs after bracing ends it restores 100 percent severe damage every second so that does a great job getting rid of that maintenance station so you can free up a little more furniture this one's got pretty similar to that so it does have a higher 
boast of armor there, but it only reduces the damage by 50% once your whole health is less than 33%. Once you're down that low, one shot, you're toast. So looking at it from a team aspect or a solo aspect, I'm going to say go with that Ouroboros because if you do manage to get sunk, it's going to heal that critical damage on your way to grab your cargo and you can continue fighting. So that's going to be great there. Now, when we come into furniture, this is another thing. It gets kind of controversial. Uh, we went ahead with that water tank. It's going to uh, reduce the, cram the stamina depletion by 50% while bracing and increases stamina recovery by 20%. So you're going to be able to just brace like mad with this thing, man. Uh, then, of course, our Lapontin schematic. That's real important right now. Uh, if you get in PvP, it's going to help you, but it's also going to help you against those plague fleets, being able to see those weak points. So a bombard grinder, this is going to increase the projectile speed of the bombards by 15%. That actually helps quite a bit. Uh, culvert grinders increase elemental damage multiplier by culvert at 19%. So did we need to really use the bombard grinder to increase those speeds? Well, I've found that it actually is pretty helpful uh, whenever you have those ships chasing it behind you. It just gets that round out there quicker to rock that ship to slow him down. So... Your choices on those folks, but that is what I run. That is one of the things that I've found to be effective, not just in PvE, but especially in PvP. Uh, I don't see any issues with, you know, changing your cosmetics and stuff, whatever you want on it, man. So here's what I run. When it comes to cell colors, I run the Sweet Nothings. That is from the uh, Mangoden. They're white during the day, and then they have that eerie glow at night. Then my patterns, I run... The dusk donor, uh, that or dusk door, that just adds a little bit of extra eerie effect to that at night. So, like I said, it's purely cosmetics, and of course, from the abyss. That's kind of my little trademark here. I've been running that thing since uh, I first opened up the the helm. That was the first thing I purchased was that. So then we have Caliban's offering here on the front. Now I like to mix and match my stuff just to make it look pretty good. I think it looks good with the you know the kind of scaled effect of the Ouroboros. And of course, our hull, there's a lot of options. We went ahead with Cruel Tides. This is something else that we got from the Mangodin. When it comes to side trims and things that you want to use, you know, I had thought about... Where is it at here? Oh, there is a Caliban zone here somewhere. Yeah, so I thought about purchasing that, but... You know, it, it's okay. So I just went ahead and opened up this cool squid thing here. I'm kind of going for this deathly come up up out of the abyss type of look. So that kind of really adds to it. I think the older vein, again, you get that from the past guys. Uh, if you're wondering what kind of stuff you get from the past, man, you, it's got some really good cosmetics. And you can use the whole set. You can mix and match like we do. So I used the Leviathan on the back. I think it kind of matches with the theme that I want to go with here on this ship. So that's what we've got here. I want to uh, come in here and make sure we got cargo. So we got ballista bolts, we've got cannonballs, we've got bombards and mortar bombs. So everything's looking good on that. We are going to set sail. And I want to put this bad boy to the test here. The best way to do that is I'm going to go ahead and go grab some eights and see if we can't get someone to pop in. I don't really need to harvest, but we're going to do it anyway. Uh, we've been pretty successful in getting our, our levels up to 10 here. For those who are interested, we'll show that real quick. So we've got like a ton of 10s now coming in. Uh, still got a, a few 8s down in the southern section. We're going to bring those up too. But we are getting there. And then uh, starting Monday, I've got some plans for tomorrow. So but starting Monday, I'm going to come in and I'm going to capture the rest of Africa. I'm going to definitely get up all these major ports into 10s. I've not decided if like these areas that don't really have connecting points that are really major hubs if I'm going to deal with them much. I may. You know, I, I say I wouldn't but it comes to a point if you're collecting them anyway, you may as well bring them on up. Uh, one of the things I like about the 10s is uh, let's see if we can find one that we recently funded here. Uh, da, da, da. I think most of these were eights last time they were funny. Yeah, anyway, so it's going to do them for two days and one hour. Now, they're going to cost you upward of 46,000 silver to 50,000 silver to do, but then you're good for a couple days. So that gives you time to really be building up those supplies. So let's find, it looks like we got a pretty 
decent home over here 1720 you know what let us just set sail we're going to pick up everything over here at the top section I see uh, a lot of Wailing Wards armors being used. I see a lot of Black Prince armors being used. You know, I'm not saying the Black Prince is a bad armor. I'm just saying for the, the type of gameplay that I do, I don't usually get sunk, but sometimes you catch those heavy mortar rounds, and they can actually leave damage not without sinking you, and it's nice to have the Ouroboros Natural Hill Effect to free up that uh, little bitty furniture spot there plus it's nice th with the brace effects that it does you know reduce stamina depletions and stuff like that in conjunction with that water tank to me it's just really awesome but I like the look of the of the ship everything's very pale looking but boy at night it is it is amazing the effects that this thing has so when it comes down to it you can Obviously, do what you want when it comes to shooting. Like I say, it's nothing. It's not a joke. It's not just a daggum tank. I mean, it, it does it does everything, man. So that is the only problem with the double winch ballista. I see if you're coming in hot. It's really for lo for long distances, but hey, like I say, those flooding culverns, they do a fantastic job of, of what they need to do. So if you're looking for a really good battle tank, man, I, I would highly recommend this. Uh, you know, that's one of the things we hear a lot of stuff. Now, of course, these are lower level ships, but we got to get those eights to start drawing in those plague ships. So that's going to be the true test of it. But you know, I've, I've done some videos on this setup in the past. I know we use a little bit different cosmetics, but, you know, I like to try and keep up with, you know, hey, well, you know, maybe there's something that's been released I've not seen. And everyone's kind of building tanks right now. You know, I'm starting to see more of them in here. So I figured I might start running my tank again. I really enjoyed the snow for a long time. I like the look of it over pretty much all of the ships out there, man. A uh, Sandbuck is just a beast when it comes to DPS. If you're looking at the most powerful DPS ship, definitely Sandbuck hands down. You're going to put those fire bombards on the rear, those Zamzama 3s on the uh, bow, and, of course, the sides. And you're just going to have so much fun with that thing, with those blaze effects and stuff. But I wanted to bring out this tank and just kind of show it to you. missed the weak spot. Okay, we're done playing around with this guy. And like I say, I actually prefer cannons, but I wanted to I wanted to give this ballista a try. It does so much damage. If I could ever get real good with it, it's exactly what I need. And maybe I'm just trying to shoot it too small of a target there, you know. It's always like right before I release it does some crazy stuff, man. <laughs> Alright. Are you going to stop bobbing around in the waves? There we go. Okay, so bringing in some of those bigger ships. I wasn't bracing in that, man. Uh, but still, we didn't take a whole lot of damage. I'm not going to bother repairing. We're going to use that, that natural heal, I think. Let's go grab some more of these eights here and see what else we can bring in. I really do. I think I might end up putting some flooding dimmies on the front. I've been kind of thinking about that. Or maybe some of the basilisk threes uh, that you can get. I've, I've not. I've just not decided on how I want to do this this bow weapon. But I wanted to give the double inch ballista another try because, hey man, it costs sovereigns for that thing. So, wow, what a horrible shot! Let's 
Okay, so we had that helm ship come out earlier. Uh, that was... I did a roving mission earlier. Uh, we were doing some forts and stuff, so definitely check that out right here. This is what we do at night, man, when we get on Discord. Uh, we, we just we have so much fun. And, and everybody that you're seeing in the video here, they've joined over through YouTube, seeing those Discord invites coming to you know, form the teams. Man, we've got like 200 active members now, and everybody's on. you got people on voice chat you got some guys who don't really like to chat in game voice chat or anything like that and hey that's fine we understand that that's at your discretion um if you do fight with us uh, we do ask if you can at least try to uh, make it so that you can hear what's going on because we do call out different types of commands we call out healing and stuff like that too as far as like let you know healing's in route to you so you can make adjustments to your speed as you need to and stuff but you know, there again, that's that's really kind of your choice. Not everybody cares about being on it, and we do have quite a few members who join up, and sometimes they join in on the voice chat, sometimes they don't, and everything seems to work out just fine. So, you know, we could go ahead and capture this. Looks like it's getting close to half full. It would be fine until, until tomorrow morning or tomorrow afternoon. But See, so I've got a few plans on that, but I'm hoping to bring out a few more fleets. Maybe if I come out on this other side, we could bring some of those plague fleets in. We just have to wait and see. But like I said, it seems like I had ran some uh, roving missions. Uh, definitely do the, the, the delivery missions because you're going to get eights on that. But what you don't want to do is actually sell the rum. You want to go to the location. As soon as you get there and you see that helm liaison, go ahead and sink it, and you're going to be able to get all the pieces of eight, just like you do with the other raw materials. Well, he's going to pay you double, sometimes almost triple, in eights of what you'd have made. The more contracts you carry, and of course, you have to deal with more fleets and stuff. So use what ship you feel is best on that for your gaming style. There's a little bitty plague ship over there. We'll go shoot him. We'll just go ahead and grab his head. I should have put a head or two on here, man. That's my, that was my fault. See you about zooming in there. Oh, we missed him with the darts. You know, you wouldn't think them little bitty ships would be such a pain to hit, but man, they are just insane sometimes. I think we grabbed his head, so we should be able to. Here we go. Here comes some action our way, guys. This is what we've been waiting on right here. That was a pretty good shot. Brace up. Wait for that cannon fire. Well, I got about one or two good barrages in them first off. It can be fun trying to see with that stuff, man. We're doing pretty good at dodging, too, so. Brace up like a horse. Oh, we missed. That's horrible. It's horrible shooting. 
I mean, you see how, how this, this brace shield, I mean, it's just hanging in there, man. Go ahead and hit us some stamina. You know, I do like the effect of the, uh, the Zams on these. They do die a little quicker. Notice how he protects his weak side. Brace up while we wait on a reload. Might have to lead just a little bit, I think, on that weak spot. Don't want to hit. So bracing very effective, but you got to remember to brace. Like I said, it's been a while since I've ran tanks. It's going to take a little bit to get used to it again. But man, I'm telling you, I, I forgot how much I, I actually enjoyed this ship. I guess we didn't have to grab them after all. So. so apparently we've got a little action here with the locals. Oop, that wasn't what I was trying to do. Now so we could probably put ironclad on this thing. And uh, just have one heck of a, uh, a brace rammer too. that other ship go do we surely we didn't kill him or I guess we did sink him got us another one back here though we'll say hello but yeah man so uh like I say if you're looking for a great build for a tank I mean you're not going to be able to, I mean you've seen with some of the uh the plague ship as long as we were bracing I mean even the hold does a pretty good job as far as holding but as long as you're bracing man you're, you're holding really nice that's the conjunction of the Ouroboros with that uh, that water tank man it just makes a serious beast of a tank so maybe you can see why I really enjoy the uh, the sails there you know that nice eerie green we could change some stuff out on the front to add more of that green effect but I think it looks pretty cool. As long as the ship shoots good, it's nice to make it look cool. But if it if it doesn't shoot and it doesn't do its job, then obviously you know, it doesn't matter what the cosmetics look like. I just not see any more plague ships. You figured there'd be some more. Thing I like about the Coronaut is you can just hold down your fire button and they'll just keep keep chucking them out or you can tap it and kind of place them out. It's up to you. But the more I use them, the more I'm getting the feel for where to aim at. So and that, the same with the uh, double inch ballista. That'll be that that'll be the same for when you switch your weapons out. We ran bombards and switched to Zams. And we used to use Coronauts and Longs and you know, it's kind of changing stuff around a little bit on the ship to keep the gameplay interesting. And uh, like I say, sometimes I will jump into my tank. Headed before we got kind of turned around here, anyway. Now I started to put the uh, mermaids on the front to make that that siren sound. Man, we actually went into uh, our battle, guys, and that was what I showed up. I ended up having to get on, I was, you know, like getting to the show, but. Uh, they were actually taking out some forts and stuff, so went down and joined the guys' Discord. You know, everyone's got everyone kind of situated where we can, you know, any aspect of the game where we're able to, you know, pose some some damage and some threats and, and just kind of take out whatever we need to. So. That was a lot of fun. I showed up with them, them mermaids, man, and everyone's like, oh, by the way, I got the volume turned down and enjoy the mermaids. So that was a really nice brace. We're going to go ahead and hit our, our stuff here. I want to make sure we get a good shot at this guy. Oh. 
what Joe was going to run into one of those boats here right in the middle of battle. If we hit him or not, I'm not sure. I think we managed to nick it, but. Right when that thing locks in, man, it'll jump on you. So be careful when you shoot it, because it will, it will give a little lock up there, a little jump. All right, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go down to half sail or uh, no trim on the sail. The reason I'm doing that is because uh, your brace lasts longer. We got more than one ship for this brace up. See what we got fighting here. Oh, it's locals. They're not a real big threat. Trying to catch it between breaks, sometimes you'll catch around, it just kind of happens. Yeah, I do think I'm going to change out that uh, double inch ballista, though. It's, it's, it's okay, but it's not, it's not as effective as I was kind of hoping, honestly. It's, it slows down the gameplay I like to do. You've got to wait too long for it to load for a one second weapon. It takes a lot longer than a second. Okay, let's see if we can get this guy. Of course we missed. Like I said, that's why I'm just not a fan of this particular thing. This and long guns, man, they both seem to kind of shoot the same. It's okay when you hit it. You're either just a little in front or just a little behind the spot you're actually aiming at, so. Now, this is one of the situations. You could also put that, uh, Scrapper station on which is the heels, but like I say, for the for the added brace strength, man, you're you're just you can't beat the Orbros water tank. Mainly because of the duration of it, man. See how the weight comes up right when you shoot. There's little dynamic things to make it just a little more challenging in the game. And yeah, we hit the sail, but yeah. He's going he's gonna to try to run now, so we're gonna have to chase him down. Yeah, so I think if I put a different cannon on the front, I think I might try the basilisk, man. I I'm really giving it some thought. It's got good pierce damage. This thing's just okay as far as I'm concerned. It's I mean you'd almost have to have perfectly calm seas or just get really good with it. Uh, maybe if you're on a computer, I could see it being it being a really nice feature. If you're using that mouse, you can get get it kind of rocking in that with that way. But when you're on a console trying to use that joystick, at least for me, sometimes it's got a little more play. I might need to go in and adjust some of those sensitivity settings on that to smoothen that out a little bit. I think we can do that. But yeah, so there's my tank build, folks. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, if you got any questions and stuff, let me know. Uh, we'll do another revise on this as far as what kind of weapon we put on the front. And we might actually, you know what, let's let's do that in this video. Rather than have make another one, let's just take this on into port. And we will do some weapons here. I mean, as far as pirate ships go and the, the, the look and the lines, it's, it's hard to beat that snow. Uh, they got the iron wheel set, I believe it is. It's... Or not the iron wheel. It's uh, it's got a big eagle on the front. I mean, it looks cool and all. It doesn't really add anything to the ship and all that. And you can get that running those investigations that pop up all over the Isles of Saint Anne and even to Lake Penjara. You walk up, you'll see like little purple dots inside of a, uh, you know, like a little gesture where they're speaking. You walk up, and you pay them silver as a bribe, and they give you the information. You have to chase down the investigations for that. It can be it can be something that's you know nice, a little distracting for you. Worried about him following us in. 
How many times have you caught fire from one of those guys and just like just watch your health eat away? Just listen for that crew to yell out and brace up, man. That's all you got to do with the ship. And as long as you're keeping your stamina at a decent health line or a decent level, you're going to be good. Uh, you're actually going to burn through less stamina bracing if you will trim the sail back a little bit. And I know that there's things where it reduces the amount of stamina or, or whatever while you're bracing and all, but you want that stamina going into your brace to hold that shield. The longer you can hold that shield, the better you're going to be. Now, with the Black Prince, yeah, you, uh, you brace, but you're not going to get that, that great effect like you do with this thing, man. I mean, you're just really not. I forgot how this is uh, slow to turn in the rear, but when it does start to come around, man, she she's coming around. Takes a minute to catch that. Do a little course correction here, so. Let's take these eights in. I don't think we need to collect anything more. I don't even know how much we got there. See if we can see how many eights we've actually picked up. We might pick some more up. I don't know. Yeah, 49, 89 on top of the... We got already. So, yeah, we'll go ahead and bring it in. We'll go see what they've got in the black market as far as weapons. I've been trying to figure out what I want to use on the bow of this ship. And uh, God, dude, it, he is just amazing with the uh, Twin Witch Ballista. He doesn't miss, man. He's, he's, he's spot on with it. So I told him I'd give it a try, you know, see what I think. And uh, while I, I think it's a very effective weapon, if you can hit with it, if you're not able to hit with it the way you want to, then it's, it's time to look at something you can be a little more effective with. Or you can sit there and try to play around with it. So, me personally, I don't like carrying more than two types of ammo typically on a ship. And I'm already carrying bombards, mortars, and cannonballs. And now I'm also carrying ballista bolts. So. Okay, so let us go down to the black market and see what we got. Or we can actually look inside the blacksmith, which is typically what I do because. It might be a weapon that we like that's not over at the black market. And if it is, it's going to tell us. So let's see what we got. I think I might want to do a basilisk cannon. Let's see. These are long guns. Mortars and rockets, ballistas and sea fire. Okay, so let's go back here. I missed something. I'm guessing that is a, yeah, it's a type of a culvern. So tearing culverns, they look okay. This has a, a better base damage, a little bit longer reload. About the same range. Fire rate's the same. Increases charge rate. See, that's something that I do think I would like on that. It's increasing that charge rate on the crew attacks because those crew attacks is, is it drops your health pretty quick and that is the manager yep so let's go over and see what we can find out here at the black market see what that costs hopefully that's something we can go ahead and pick up and we'll have all the resources to build and be able to drop that on here so let's find out that floor is a little slick there she need to get somebody to come mop that I almost fell, man. Come on now. Here we go. We're getting there. Basculus 3. There she is. We're going to go ahead and pick that up. I mean, they've got some, some interesting weapons here. I mean, I don't know. It's a top deck launcher with faster arming. Reload time, but deals lower damage, so you can shoot more shots. But some kind of explosive torpedo. I'm just not a big fan of torpedoes, man. Sticky fuel station. Uh, if you're using something to think about too, if you're using sticky fuel and you're using stuff that set a blaze effect, this is this is actually not a bad piece of furniture to have on your ship. So I've been giving it some thought on putting it on my sandbuck. But I just haven't really decided yet because it's it's increasing duration of blaze effect by 10 seconds, which is which, or 10 percent. The other stuff that we have increases our zamas 
and I don't think you have to use this just with that that flamethrower so it might be we'll go ahead and pick the blueprint up I've been looking at it for a while and of course pork powder kegs yada 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 that's not something I'm really too big into you do have some pretty interesting things here that, are, that work out pretty nice Okay, back to the blacksmith. I think I've got one of each type of resource. I don't think I'm going to have to. The rare resources. If it's asked for worm's breath, I think I've got a bottle or two in the warehouse. We'll find out here in just a second. There she is. And it takes orca mechanism. I've got some of those, so not a big deal. Let's build that bad boy. I think I'm going to be much happier with this, honestly. I mean, I really do. I thought about putting Zambas on the front, but I kind of want to try some of these other weapons out for the tank, mainly because we're not getting that real big blaze effect. Uh, well, I'll tell you what, we'll just build that station later when we get back into our sandbuck because typically when we're running in groups, I'm running a DPS ship. Uh, we've got a lot of tanks. We've got some healers. Uh, we've got Briggs, you know, all the all the really good, you know, attributes of a fleet going already, and that's one of the things I love anyway is DPS, and there's not as many people that enjoy the sandbuck. I wouldn't say enjoy, they just, you know, the, the whole, compared to a tank, it takes some adjustment to get to, that. that is for sure, so let us manage this. We're going to take this ship back out for a test drive, folks. All right. Let's see what we've got going on. We could load that up with all purple and have a, a 12. But if it's a 12 that you're not really happy with, I say build what you like. Uh, you know, we could throw that armor on and get that on up a little further. But it's not something that I'm too too concerned with. You know what I mean? I want to move some of this stuff out. And we do have a head, so we shouldn't have any problem attracting some attention. Let's see what we can do. And we'll give this a big test uh, tomorrow evening. And we'll post a video up of it. Putting it in those real big battles we create right out here in front of St. Anne. Uh, everybody loading up pirate heads. I mean, everyone, that, if you just bring one, it's going to help. But if you don't have one, you don't really have to. I mean, if enough people have it, you're going to be able to keep the aggro level up and just alternate as people come into dock. You don't want to all come flooding in at the same time, obviously. Yeah, I think I'm going to enjoy this a lot better here. I'm sure it's probably only two shots off the front. Could be four. Pretty sure it's just two. Okay, so there we go. There is a plague ship up ahead. Ease up here. So get that range adjusted in. Cut the trim. Wait for him to shoot his wad, and we're gonna pop him back. I don't shoot over him too much. Of course, we hit a local, so now we're gonna have the local shooting at us too. Muskets, clear that deck. Maybe we can board them quicker. That's the thing. You want to get that ship out of here as quick as possible. I know that's one of the things that we get a lot of comments on is people like, well, you know, how do you, you know, what do you do to take that guy out so fast? Well, sometimes I'll board them. You want to clear the deck. Anytime you get that crew attack, you want to clear that deck. And that's what the crew attacks are doing. So you can get up there a little closer. Come on, man. 
Don't jump in there. I'm, I'm working on a video here. Yeah, I love it when you get people that come in to help and they just get right in the way. He means well. Anyway, you will be able to sink them. Yeah, I think I'm taking more damage from these guys than anything. Yes, old darts, they do such a great job. Two shot it. Once you get the angle of approach, man, you can just wear these guys out. Once you know you got the right the right shot, the right distance, man, just hold that button down and it'll hammer over. Great stuff, great stuff. So there's my tank build, guys. Comment in there. Let me know what you think. Uh, I hear a lot of people saying they like the prints better. That That's great that, that you found a armor that works for you. Uh, like I say, I'm not going to put something on just because it's the popular piece when I can, I can see that there's a, a pretty big difference in it personally but you know that's that's everybody's preference when it comes to the game and that's one of the great things about playing rpgs is everyone gets to build their character kind of different however they want it suited to themselves suited to their gameplay y'all have a wonderful day cryptic gaming is out